this is how you are to conduct yourself. You are to love people. You are to love your sister, love your brother, love those that you relate with. And so it is so important that the father is there. You know, I came from a family with a mother and a father and 14 children, <laughs> eight boys and six girls. We should have had conflict. But I remember my father had a broad cowskin belt. And when you make yourself stupid, a few lashes bring you back to your senses. And everybody knew in the family what they had to do. And I'm saying today, too many of our young people and older folks has got so much time in their hand that they do not know what to do. And the Bible says the enemy will find work for idle hands. And you know what blessed, what, what blessed my heart? Is that my father didn't leave us even though he was a poor man and ran away and leave us. And nowadays you find father got one and two children. And by the time you're looking for them, you're just seeing the footsteps when they left. I, I thank God my father is dead and gone, but he put structure in our lives. I can't remember any of us fighting in the home, even though we used to use what we call pass down clothes. We didn't have to fight nobody. He was not able to give us everything that we need, but he gave us the basic thing in life and he put values in our lives. And values used to be taught in the home in the school. Nowadays, you got to beg your children to come to church to serve God. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying to you out there, young man, young woman, you will be forced at some point in time in your life, whether you will choose God or you will refuse Him. Excellent. Where yeah. better place is, is it to find values than in the Word of God? John wrote, he testified in Revelation 1, it says, blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it, because the time is near. We spoke about the last days, and indeed, these are times when the return of Jesus Christ is imminent. I would like you to take stock of what you are doing. See how far away you are from the words of God. There are many of you who heard this word when you were a young boy. Perhaps you are looking at me. You know the word, you went to Sunday school, but you have moved away. This is the time for you to repair yourself. Come back, pay attention to the word of God. And it might help you to get rid of all the wrath that might be welling up inside, welling up inside. If it wasn't for the Lord on my side, I don't know where would I, I would have been today. Yeah. You know, I, I want us to remain here a little while longer. Um, what, sanction is, well, what sanction is there in place um, to prevent or to preclude some of these things from happening? Um, I know the courts, um, the courts would have a system where if a man fails to support the child, if the if they, 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 they young woman um, takes him to court, he is forced to pay. But I don't want that to be um, the sanction. Yeah. We should go back to the family. If you examine some of the young men and some young women who are having children now, they are disqualified, in my view, simply because of age. They would not have gone through the process where they would have learned sufficient values and sufficient um, discipline in order how to raise children, but these are the very people who are producing children. So you have the mother and father who have a, a deficit in terms of values of things that they uphold strongly. They are now producing children. So we have the offsprings who are being born now who are coming with a minus, a minus all the time. Mm -hmm. So I think that rather than us focusing or looking to society, I think right in the family, the values that we teach to our children, I think we should tell them exactly when. I mean, I don't think you're ready now to have children. You should remain and you should learn some more before you can. But having said that, who are those persons in the family that should be passing on those values? And that's my that point. is where the problem is. I believe, I believe, I go back to the fact that the family is the bedrock of our value system and it is supported by the education system education system and the church and the other social groups and therefore a daddy a father needs to be in the home 
because he provides that stabilizing force. I want to read 1 Corinthians 13, 4, 5, 6. It says, love is patient, love is kind. Love does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always per perseveres. And daddy is the one who claims he not only loves mommy, but he loves his children. And therefore, he demonstrating these kinds of attributes, it filters down to every other member of the family. And so there is somebody who must be there who represents these things. Well, we are assuming, I mean, that comment assumes that the father is the father of one unit. <laughs> you know, and, um, I don't know that's, that's a very, um, a very, uh, that we could make that assumption of the society. The trouble is, we have renegade fathers. We have fathers who have abandoned their post. They are, I mean, they are absent without leave. These, we don't know where they are. We can't even find their footprints, you know, <laughs> where these guys have gone. And, and it's in this environment, you have children who are following that example. It's as simple as that, you know. People will become lovers of themselves by the father doing what he is doing and disappearing. Children, he is a role model, and you know, mothers, you are you are in agony when you see your own child. So many mothers have said that to me. Their father abandoned them, left them alone. You raised them on your own, and that child has a love for that same renegade, and you're wondering how he could love, how this child could love this man, and that's the way how God designed it. And and, and you know, women should learn from the eagle. Um, in terms of choosing mates, who you're going to get children for and that kind of situation. This is very complex, you see. This is not the superstructure, this is the foundation. And we're not just laying the blame on the level of family, but there are social groups also, like, like, like the church, like, you know, like the police. And, and this is a question society must ask itself. Society must answer questions that people are asking and stop answering questions that nobody is asking, you know? And providing a whole set of solutions that, that, that are totally irrelevant. We have to start providing solutions to real problems. We have a real problem in terms of family and we need to bring everything on board. You know, I, I agree for managers. I, I was a manager once in my life. We used to take joy in every year you have to employ new recruits. And it used to be so exciting to watch the new people coming in to be interviewed. It's a nightmare now. Because some young people are coming because they intend to make money by joining your company. That was never um, the idea. 20, 25 years ago, you came to learn, you came to make a contribution. Mm -hmm. People are coming to make money, quick. Yes. Yes. The scripture says, they're lovers of money. This is a frightening thing. So <laughs> if, if you have a young man, a young woman coming into the job, and they find the loopholes, and they're bright, and they find the loopholes, and they're working at a bank, for example, watch out. They're working at a money transfer company, watch out. <laughs> they are, you have major problems, systemic problems, and then you have these personality um, disorders. Uh, but, but how do we, we are only waiting when there's a murder mm -hmm. or a rape, and then we say, these are the problems. Yeah. We need to recognize the early warning signals. For example, a little child, seven, five to seven, might produce a drawing in school, Teachers must be observant. Teachers must be alert. A simple drawing showing what is a mommy and what is a daddy. And children might do a little drawing there showing the daddy beating the mommy and might even produce blood and tears in their little drawings. We must not just this, uh, call a child and say, you know, you had a bad dream. We need that's an early warning signal of what, what that child is picturing, attempting to convey, attempting to, to express. 
as best he or she could and a teacher, a, not just a secular teacher, a Sunday school teacher could see this and begin to deal with that. We need to find a way because uh, if, if that is left like that, that child can grow into becoming a monster yeah. to torment society. Yeah. And, and we can't wait until they commit, uh, they break the law, hurt somebody else before we intervene. We need to have the scouts, the, the guides, the police. I mean, I am shocked. How many women have been murdered already for the year? I mean, this is, we need, we need a lot of work to be done. We have a lot of work to be done. And I, I imagine as we listen to the words of the Apostle Paul here, um, all hands are required on deck, disobedient to parents. If children are disobedient to parents, when they go to work, mm -hmm. what do you think will happen? Mm -hmm. We enter into new situations as we leave the old one. And if they leave the home being disobedient to parents, yes. I don't care if they have 17 CXC mm -hmm. with 17 grade ones and 17 distinctions. Guess what will happen? They will be disobedient to yeah. the authorities. We have to be, um, every parent, um, we, we are guardians of the, of the, the, the value system. Mm -hmm. Parent, you're a guardian of the value system. And just to follow up on what was said, um, it therefore means that uh, a certain level of vigilance must be out there, an eye of vigilance in terms of how we see children operating. Um, you know, your son or your daughter might be in school and the child might be coming home with, 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 with something that you did not purchase for them, you did not buy. And uh, you know, they might be into bullying and taking other stuff. And if you recognize that, you need to, as a parent, you need to deal with, with that because that over time will fester and uh, sometimes, you know, the child turn out to, to engage in, in robberies and, 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 and so forth. So as a parent, we have the responsibility of, of being a guardian of the value systems that, that we teach. The early warning signs are here. If you look for them as a guardian, as a parent, you will see them. I pray you have the grace of God and the strength to correct it. Hear what Solomon said in Proverbs chapter 4. He says, For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. And he taught me, Fathers, we are challenging you to take up your responsibility. Don't shirk it. Do exactly what you have to do. And the Lord will honor you. We see, we have a nation to build. Yeah. And the foundation is very critical. Sir, so you are that foundation. This entire superstructure rest with you. Amen. God bless you. See you next time. Thank you for being part of Choices. Remember you can join us at First Assembly for any of our regular weekly services. I'm Sunisha on behalf of the set reminding you that your whole life is the sum of your choices. God bless you.